Kenyan oilmaker Kenal Kobel has posted an 86% rise in first half pre-tax profit to 3.22 billion shillings. That despite steep increases in international oil prices as well as the devaluation of all local currencies to uh, the US dollar in countries they operate in. We now cross to Nairobi where Jacob Segman, the group managing director, is standing by to drill into those numbers. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Jacob, for joining us uh, today. While analysts said strong performance had been expected to come through uh, from Kenal Cobal, the extent of the profit rise certainly came as a surprise today. Kenal Cobal posting an 86% jump in first half pre-tax profit. Uh, run us through that on the sales front first and what's actually contributing things uh, on that end. Thank you. Good afternoon, Aisha. Um, I wouldn't say that it, it was a surprise to the management. Actually, we have seen uh, uh, the good signs uh, developing towards the fourth quarter of 2010. Uh, and we took some strategic decisions, mainly on inventory holdings across the group, uh, which proved to be working very well uh, for us. Uh, this was, of course, one of the contributors to uh, these uh, strong results. As you said, 86% uh, uh, growth in uh, in net profit is quite uh, encouraging. I can tell you that we were uh, expecting even uh, for more if it was not for the devaluation of uh, all uh, local currencies we operate. And we operate with about eight local currencies with the major currencies like uh, US dollar, euro. So you may see it's a quite a complex uh, uh, operation. So um, I would say the main contributors are, of course, as I mentioned, uh, uh, our uh, stock or inventories management by this uh, great uh, Kenel Cobil uh, management team. Uh, our expansion uh, proved itself very well. Uh, the move outside Kenya, which started quite a number of years ago, uh, I think we are seeing now a strong contribution coming from uh, uh, countries we moved in, uh, like uh, Zambia, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, um, uh, Burundi, and you may be even surprised even from Ethiopia, which is a very uh, stiffly uh, regulated market. We, 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 we were profitable in this market. So I would say our strategy basically on this uh, folds, geographical, the geographical expansion plus the inventory stock management. Uh, how exactly have, you know, the fact that we've seen multinationals exiting the oil marketing space specifically on the East Coast benefited your strategy? Because like you say, it's your expansion drive regionally that's uh, played a very big role uh, towards creating the kind of numbers we've seen put on the table today. Yeah. Um you have to understand our uh, strategy, and I think last time we met and uh, we talked uh, over the uh, over the TV, and I, I said clearly we shall continue focusing on uh, expansion and uh, inventories management, as well as uh, developing new supply uh, channel into the um, regions we operate. And remind you along the. East Coast Africa, we have today actually four channels from which we feed our group. Uh, the north one is Djibouti, from where we feed uh, mainly uh, Ethiopia. Uh, then you come uh, to Mombasa. Uh, we've had issues with Mombasa as, as, a, as a supply uh, channel, uh, but we talked about it in the past. I, I wouldn't like to go back into it. but. That forced us actually to develop very much the Tanzanian uh, uh, channel, uh, ex Dar es Salaam. Most recently, we made acquisition of a major terminal there, so we've developed this uh, supply channel and, of course, inventories or, 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 or uh, uh, storage capacity in Dar es Salaam as well. Uh, from there, we are supplying today um, most of our subsidiaries and the export business into Rwanda, Burundi. Uh, Eastern Congo, Uganda, uh, Zambia, Malawi, yeah. and so on. And, and most recently, we developed uh, the Baira uh, channel from which we intend to uh, supply. And we, are already, we have already started uh, Zimbabwe, um, uh, Lubambashi area, Malawi, and so on.
Well, of course, uh, clearly that illustrating just what, you know, the fact that we've seen the exit of multinationals from the East Coast and them leaving a gap, what kind of opportunity that's opened up for you. This comes with very hefty financing costs, though, and uh, that has been hit uh, by the decline of the shilling against the dollar this year, where we've seen your financing costs uh, rise 1.3 billion sh to 1.3 billion shillings from 722 million in the same period uh, a year ago. Just how much of a challenge is that? for you right now and furthering on with your expansion strategy yeah it's true uh, the financing cost has been our main challenge I may just correct you uh, our financing cost is not has not been driven by uh, our m and activities or acquisition all our acquisitions up to now uh, and the most recent ones, as you probably know, the Tanzania, the, the Burundi, the uh, Uganda assets, all have been financed from internally generated funds. Uh, so it is a very clean group mm -hmm. without any me uh, medium or long term borrowing uh, for any of the capital expenditures. So all our financing costs coming mainly from the um, operating uh, capital required for the group. Of course, with this kind of turnover, and you've seen that we, we are talking about uh, 1.8 billion US dollars of net turnover. That's substantial uh, uh, capital that we need in order to continue, you know, uh, running uh, the, the, the 2.5 million tons turnover in terms of uh, volumes. So yes, of course, uh, it is. It has been a challenge. We have been trying to sort it out through uh, sort of hedging contracts uh, on exchange uh, uh, with uh, with some banks, local banks, not only in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania, yeah. in Zambia recently. Well, uh, it's been a challenge. Yes.